Hello everyone. So in this week's film, I'm going to be talking to you about lining the lips, how I line my lips and how I correct the shape of my lips and also enlarge and enhance them ever so slightly. I thought this was a fantastic idea following from last week's film where I produced a tutorial about dark red lips. I shall also leave the applicable link to last week's film in the description of this film, if you wish to view, of course. But in today's film, I'm going to share with you the tips and techniques and the recommendations for which that I use on my self personally. But of course, many of these tips and techniques will be applicable to you. Of course, you just adjust on the basis of the skin color you have and the lip shape for which that you may want to correct if you are unhappy with your own lips. Throughout the world and throughout the many different ethnic groups that we see everywhere in the world, there is discoloration in the lips or there is coloration. There's a, a varied color palette in the lips, but there does tend to be standard sorts of coloration from region to region. Certainly in Europe, where I come from, in the northwest of Europe, where lips do tend to be quite red, but even though they are very red, the coloration that you will see sometimes is that there's a bit of white in the lips. So the lips can look quite red, but still quite white. Sometimes this can appear as if there's more dead skin on the lips than there actually is. Personally, I love the color of my natural lips. I think it's great. However, I like to just enhance it. To date, I have not yet been able to find a lip liner or a lipstick for which is a perfect match to my natural lips. I think I would have to bring out my own range of lipsticks and lip liners to get my own perfect match. But there are colors on the market which are very similar and very flattering to my own lips. Now these colors might work for you if you have super dark skin and might not necessarily look that flattering on you. Although I do tend to think that there are nudes that are universal on everybody that everybody can wear. I'm certainly very fond of Jubilee lipstick by MAC Cosmetics. It's a marvelous shade as is Modesty. And these do tend to work on absolutely everybody. If you have very light skin like my own, it can actually look like quite a strong dark nude. Whereas if you have very dark skin, it can actually look like quite a light nude. So of course it depends depends on you and what you like to wear and what you want to wear, of course. However, today I'm not going to be going into immense depth about how to color correct or correct the shape of all types of lips on all skin tones. Today I'm going to keep it relatively specific to my own, how I enhance the natural lip color and the shape, as well as correcting and balancing out asymmetry within my own lips. My own lips are actually quite misshapen and have a lot of asymmetry in them, but I'm going to show you how I correct them today. I do tend to find that nude tones can just lift. And two colors that I would certainly recommend to absolutely anybody is Spice Lip Pencil by MAC Cosmetics, as well as Subculture Lip Pencil by MAC Cosmetics. These are fantastic for just evening out any discoloration that's in the lip, as well as lining the lips. I sometimes use these as lip liners. However, spice is very dark on me, of course. Subculture is quite light. Now these colors will look dark on my sort of skin tone. Whereas if you're somebody with very dark skin, these colors will look quite light. But what you can actually use these for is highlighting the center of the lips. They can be used to lift color in the center of the lips, but on sort of more medium skin tones that are either Asian or Middle Eastern, these colors are fantastic for just lifting the tone in the lip and lining the lip. It looks great on those skin tones. Colors like Half Red and Mahogany by MAC Cosmetics are also absolutely fantastic for lining the lips. They look great on most people, but certainly if you have a, quite a deep skin tone, if your skin's quite dark, these colors will be fantastic for evening out any coloration. Another two colors which I'm very fond of and use myself, one of them is Natural by Supercover, this one here, and this one here is Honey by L'Oreal. Now, both these colors are fantastic for lining lips. In fact, the Honey by L'Oreal is very similar to MAC Cosmetics Subculture Lip Pencil, and this Natural by Supercover is very similar to Spice, but these, of course, are fantastic when lining the lips, definitely on a light to medium skin tone. Now, two colors that I use very frequently within my work, and of course, of course, personally, I absolutely adore both of these shades. And this is Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat. The first one is Pillow Talk, and the second one is Pink Venus. Now, both these colors are absolutely fantastic. Pink Venus is definitely richer than the Pillow Talk, but the Pillow Talk is the closest pencil I've ever been able to find to my own natural lip color. However, it is a little bit more brown than my natural lip color. And as you can see, it is much loved. I definitely go through a lot of this pencil. I tend to have to restock this color quite often as I do use it heavily within my work and personally. This isn't the case for all shades of lipstick, but certainly when it comes to nude lips, I always line the lips 
lips first. However, with dark lips, I apply the lipstick first so then I can place the lip line in. Rather than going in and drawing a shape where you're likely to make a mistake, nude lipstick and nude lip liner, of course, is a lot more forgiving than per se dark lipstick that's either black or red or whatever color you're using, it is definitely a lot easier to correct. So with my lips, you can actually see that they're quite asymmetric and I'll show you what I mean. The lips are fattest on the right side of my face. So they rise more on the right side of my face and my, lip, my actual lips droop more so on the left side of my face as I am of the belief that some of my teeth have actually disabled the nerve, which I consider to be a hereditary thing as there are other members of my family that have similar lips that sort of droop a little bit. But the right side of my lips, the top right part of my lip is quite full as is the bottom. However, on the left side, the top left is smaller and the bottom left is also smaller. So what I like to do first of all is really bring these sides up and match them over together. Then I overdraw where I feel like I need to bring things into proportion. I do tend to overline my top lip more so than I overline the bottom lip. I don't really overline the bottom lip that much because I have quite a full bottom lip, but the top lip is a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner amongst the rest of my face. I like to bring balance in the face. And I also like to feminize my features ever so slightly. In women, you do tend to find that there is less space between the philtrum and the septum. They are closer together than they are in men. So by lining my top lip, I'm able to stretch the lips ever so slightly, creating the illusion of less space between the two, just ever so slightly. I just like it to be faint, as I do quite like my features. However, I just like to bring balance amongst the face. Now, before I line my lips, I do tend to remove all foundation from my lips before I go in with any lip liner or lipstick. But first of all, I always apply a little bit of chapstick to the lips, just so that I can reduce the amount of friction when I go in with the lip liner. Sometimes if you go in with a lip liner to very dry lips, like my own, which are very dry, it can sometimes snap the freshly sharpened pencil. I don't commonly go in with a sharp pencil when lining the lip. I usually fill in the lips first of with the blunt pencil and then I sharpen it and go round the line as I do tend to find it a little bit wasteful sharpening the pencil continuously before aligning the lips. And I always sharpen with MAC Cosmetics pencil sharpener. I do tend to find that sharpeners that are produced and retailed by cosmetic companies do tend to be superior to the sharpeners for regular pencils because their sharpeners are designed for makeup pencils as opposed to lead ones or chalk ones. So first of all, the right side of my lips is a lot bigger and a lot fuller than the left. However, I think there's some slight nerve damage in the left part of my jaw, which I think is a hereditary thing as there are family members that also have slightly drooping lips like I do. So when I stare at you forward, you can see that the right side of my lips is much bigger and fuller, whereas the left droops slightly. So what I like to do is correct and even out the shape. So I always begin on the lower lip, on the right side. Now, because I don't want to enlarge the lips on the right side of my bottom lip, I don't necessarily overdraw. I just follow the natural lip line. And I fill it in ever so slightly as I'm going along. Now, standing closely in a mirror and lining the lips so that they look symmetrical doesn't immediately correct the shape of the lips. You also have to think about lips as a 3D object as opposed to a flat object. So the right side of my lips tend to protrude further forward. Certainly the bottom lip protrudes forward further on the right side. And a great tip and technique when lining the lips and correcting the shape is to also look further back and watch yourself talking and whilst you move your lips and move around. The lip itself is not a flat shape, it has dimension. My bottom right lip protrudes further, so I have to create the illusion on the other side of a protruding bottom lip on both sides. So in order to do that, I must negotiate on my symmetry when lining the lips. I must have some asymmetry to create the illusion of symmetrical lips. So on the other side, I pull the lip liner down further. And because the actual bottom lip protrudes further over, I look at it from above almost. So I face down, which is probably looking rather frightful for you all, but I face down and I look straight at the lips. And I do this just to make myself aware to where I need to place the artificial line so that they all flow together. And I look at the lips whilst I'm talking just to really build a shape in my head, to build a mental shape of where I need to go with the lip pencil. So if I do a slightly funny face like this, you will be able to see 
that the bottom left part of the lips protrudes further down. I've drawn a line further down than my lips, but then when I look at you forward, and whilst I'm talking, you can see that I've corrected the shape on my bottom lip. By drawing the artificial lip line further down, it creates the illusion that my lips are quite full. Because the lips protrude further out on the right side of the bottom lip, I'm then comprehending that on the left side of the lips with the artificial line. And I take the side of the pencil and I just fill in the lips ever so slightly. Now, because my lips do tend to droop down on the top lip, they look slightly like a roof. What I like to do, first of all, is follow the cupid bow. Now my cupid bow is quite deep and it's slightly to one side. It's, its placement within my face is asymmetric. It's more towards the left. I've always thought that the left side of my lips are trying to run away somewhere. I don't know where they're going, but I'm going to make sure they stay on my face for the time being. So on the right side of my top lip, which is relatively full, I do like the shape of it. However, I do like to broaden it further. Now, of course, my top lip is asymmetric, but I actually like to broaden my lips to make them look taller on the face, to bring balance to the features, but also to feminize them. In women, you do tend to find that there's less space between the septum and the philtrum. However, However, in men, the space is greater. So, by creating the illusion of there being less space, by pulling the lip liner ever so slightly higher, it creates a more feminine appearance. And I only overdraw the lips to be taller just ever so slightly. So I follow the natural cupid bow on the right side. But where the lip meets to turn down, I pull the pencil up and outward. And the reason I do this is because I'm then going to draw in a curved lip line. I'm going to follow my natural lip line, but bring it a little bit higher, but curve it so that it doesn't droop down. I'm going to curve it. So with small strokes, I just start to curve the line. And because my bottom lip is quite full and a little bit fat, it looks almost swollen in comparison to the top lip. So by enhancing and enlarging the top lip ever so slightly, it brings everything into proportion. Now, as you can see on the top right part of the lip, I haven't overlined the lip substantially. I have just simply drawn and adjusted the shape. I haven't actually enlarged it substantially, but in comparison to the left side of my top lip, you can see that they look fundamentally different. Now, as I said before, the cupid bow is slightly to one side. So on the top left part of my lip, I have to draw in a new cupid bow. I have to cut over. That is why sometimes when you see pictures of me, that is why for those of you with a keen eye, probably notice that on the left side of my cupid bow, there's always a slightly lighter part here. That is because I have had to replace the lip line to create a much more symmetrical appearance. Now, I do tend to find that when I overdraw the lips and do corrective techniques with the pillow talk, I then have to darken the edge of it just ever so slightly. And to do that, I'm going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics lip pencil in the shade Spice, which is substantially darker than my own natural lip color and the pillow talk. But what I do is I just very lightly sketch in just in areas I want to make a little bit darker. So that more or less completes the lip lining procedure. However, if you feel as if though you have made a few or one or two minor little mistakes, one technique that I shall recommend to you is to take your concealer brush and apply a little bit of the concealer and just cut in where you feel as if though you may have made an error. Always a good idea to look far back in the mirror to see how the lips look, where the placement of the lips are, and as well to tilt your head down so you can just see how the lips move on the mouth and what might need to be added or what might need to be subtracted. And this technique of just concealing over the lip line that you might have applied and just feathering it out ever so slightly so that it's all seamless. It really allows you to edit the lip line so that you can ensure a perfect, suited, lip liner and lipstick. And it's always very important to step back slightly and talk and look at the lips and go still, just so that you can really see how they look, go from side to side, really start to understand the lips as well to face down in the mirror and to look slightly back so that you get an intimate understanding of your own lips and how to line them and how to best correct the shape. Now that I've corrected the lip shape and I feel very happy with the lip shape, what I'm now going to go in with is lipstick. At this point, you can go in with absolutely any lipstick that you want, but today I'm going to go for one that is not very far off my natural lip color, which is also a Charlotte Tilbury product. And this is the Matte Revolution shade Pillow Talk, which is an exact match to the Pillow Talk lip liner. But this isn't a lipstick formula, and this one is a matte formula. And I purchased this shade very recently. I was very happy to see that there was a Pillow Talk equivalent in a lipstick. And as you can see, it's a little bit browner than my own natural lip color, but the tone and the shade certainly isn't far off. 
a little darker and a little bit more brown. This colour is also a fantastic colour. I think this would work on many, many skin tones, even very dark skin tones. It could be used as quite a light nude in the centre of the lips. So that more or less completes today's film on how to enhance, how to correct the shape of the lips if there is any asymmetry, as well as the colour correction within the lips. But I very much enjoyed creating this film for you here today, sharing with you my own personal techniques tips and recommendations regarding the reshaping of lips to make them look more balanced amongst the face, as well as correcting any asymmetry within the lips and any discoloration. It becomes very easy to line and correct the lips the more you do it. Practice makes perfect as the old saying goes. I will make the recommendation that you always step back and look in the mirror and also close up and talk and move your mouth. Also look at the lips still from above and of course below that you really get a 360 view of the lips when establishing where to place the artificial lip line, as well as understanding the dimension of the lips. If you have anything that is protrusive, where to balance it, just so that it appears more even. I hope that you have found the tips, the techniques, the recommendations, and the demonstrations within today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.